thing. And now we need that national dental service. Ms. Uh, Wilde. Thank you very much. I congratulate the Honourable Lady and my Honourable Friend on securing this important debate. As fellow Norfolk and Waveney MPs, our constituents face similar challenges in getting access to NHS dentists. And this is a long-running problem which my predecessor also pursued following the closure of a dentist in Snetsham. It was one of the issues that I raised in my maiden speech and have focused on ever since due to the inadequate provision in West Norfolk. Of course, the restrictions put in place during COVID have further reduced access, as others have referred to, and the British Dental Association estimates that 40 million appointments were lost overall. But the situation before COVID was poor. The National Audit Office found that my constituency had the lowest number of dentists per head in the country. Norfolk had the lowest level of dental activity actually delivered in the country, with only 65% of the contracted NHS activity delivered, compared to a median level of 96% nationally, a point that my honourable friend for Basingstoke referred to in her comments. And it also had the highest percentage, 17.5% of people who are unsuccessful when trying to get an NHS appointment. So since being elected, I've met regularly with the NHS East of England team to press for better dent access to dentists, particularly following the closure of the My Dentist practice in Kings Lynn. And I'm pleased that these discussions led to a procurement process, which while delayed by COVID, took place um, from the summer last year, and that procurement has been successful with the NHS just announcing two new contracts to Smile Care Norfolk to increase access to dentists in Kings Lynn. So I want to put on record my thanks to the team at the NHS East of England for their efforts in successfully completing that procurement, which will mean from the 1st of July my constituents will have better access than they do currently. But it is disappointing, as my honourable friend referred to, that in Fakenham and Thetford um, the procurement was unsuccessful, I'm sure, my honourable friend for Broadland, if he catches your eye, uh, Mr Efford will speak about that more. Of course, another issue that other people have touched on is the supply of dentists. And figures from the Office of Students show that in 2020 there are 895 dental students, rising to 983 in 2020, compared to 810 in 2019. But for 2022, the intake figure issued by the Office for Students is only 809. Given the challenges in dentistry provision, we should be increasing that number, not reducing it. And we should all be, lo so be looking at measures so that training, people under training spend time in the areas where the coverage is weakest and also be more directing in requiring people who've qualified to spend time in those areas as well. I also note that none of the 11 dental schools in England are in East Anglia. Yeah, yeah. And given the low levels of dental coverage, I joined the Honourable Member for York in putting a bid for, for one in um, East Anglia in yes. Norfolk, in Kings Lynn, um, perhaps to help uh, address, that, <laughs> address that gap. And another issue that's been raised is the contract dating from 2006, and my honourable friend candidly referred to it as a disastrous contract last month uh, with the perverse incentives, disincentives for NHS dentists to take on NHS work. And I'm sure in her remarks she'll be able to give us an update on when new measures will be brought forward. So there's a greater focus on prevention and care for individual patients. So in conclusion, new services coming to Kings Lynn are very warmly welcome to improve access. However, further reforms, including to training and the contract, are needed to ensure that people have the access to dentistry that they need and that they deserve. <laughs>